Welcome to markets now. Monday's market closes. We're lower in grains mixed in the hogs, but a higher day in the live cattle futures. Pat Von Trish, professional ag marketing, is joining us. And in fact, we scored new contract highs much of the way down the board in the live cattle futures. Pat, talk about what pushed that market here today. Yeah, pretty impressive trade again in that live cattle futures as we continue uh, to be supported by uh, stronger cash markets and a friendly cattle on feed report. Uh, has allowed for a little open interest to creep back higher in the cattle complex. We're starting to see a little bit of outside money flow back into that market as, as uh, traders are cautiously optimistic about the, the packer's enthusiasm to continue to harvest some, some cattle here in spite of some, some narrower margins. And so, you know, we've got uh, you know, a decent uh, a bullish input from the supply side and the demand side cautiously optimistic maybe a bit on the export front too, Michelle, we continue to hear of and see some pretty decent disappearance, uh, uh, especially into that uh, Chinese market. And so a little bit of a, of a nice uh, 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 tailwind uh, from, from the ASF time in China, but uh, uh, we continue to see pretty good beef movement in that Chinese market. And, and perhaps that's helping to, to provide for some firm undertones for this cattle market. Yeah, obviously the Packers have been chasing this thing in terms of the cash market. Are they going to continue to push that again this week? I think we got a chance at it. I, I don't know what would uh, change the thought process too much here, especially as we approach uh, our holiday season and, and uh, would hopefully some optimistic uh, 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 bets on, uh, on retail movement as we go through. Uh, the, the balance of the fourth quarter here and, and through the holiday season. So I would I would suspect uh, with some shorter harvest week schedules coming up here that over the next couple, three weeks, we should still see some pretty good uh, interest from the pack. So as far as the technical side of the market, since uh, we did push into those contract high areas, where do you project us to? Are we going back to the levels we saw, say, in 2014 or where? Well, I got a shot at it. You know, this is uh, it's an interesting time from a technical perspective once you sort of set new highs here. And so I wouldn't rule anything out. 2014 highs is a possibility. Um, I think uh, I suspect with some of the uh, headwinds that are faced from an outside market perspective, uh, the volatility in the stock market, just to name one, I, I doubt we go straight there, Michelle. I suspect that uh, after we set some new highs here, there's a a reasonable chance that we start to get a little bit more volatile, but look for some spots to uh, find some wide areas of consolidation to uh, see what happens with cash cattle trade as we work uh, through the month of November. Speaking of consolidation, we saw a little bit of that in the hogs today, but we are probably due for a little correction. And is it just a correction before we take the next leg up? What's pushing us there? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that we're, there's another leg up in the hog market, if I had to just to say it, to, to try to describe it that way. I, you know, we, we, we tried to trade this market lower anticipation of, of sloppier fundamentals as you go through the fourth quarter, and they just haven't materialized. And so, you know, the market has traded back to uh, what is closer to a normal discount to what the current index is, and, and we'll see what happens. I think... Uh, you know, to, for, for the, the packer needing to pay for some edges uh, you know, last week, still paying up over 100 bucks for a first for a few loads to finish out his harvest plans is a pretty significant statement uh, as we work uh, into uh, the last week of October here. So I'd be surprised if, if we take another leg higher here, but we yeah. certainly are in a spot where we're willing to consolidate and see what happens uh, with the cash trade over the next week or two. So cash has to push us, exports have to continue to push us as well, and will China be in as a buyer now that they have record pork prices? Yeah, million dollar question. We've, uh, as you mentioned, we've seen a significant increase in Chinese pork prices. Still not quite to a level where it makes economic sense, tariffs considered and everything else for, for to see significant primal movement from the U.S. into that Chinese market. but. Um, certainly more competitive from a variety of meat awful uh, perspective. So we'll see what happens. Exports are going to be the key here as we go through the balance of the fourth, fourth quarter and into the first quarter of next year. Uh, continues uh, to struggle with uh, currency issues, particularly into that South Korea and, uh, and Japan market. 
Um, a good guy for sure is that Mexico market. So that's been a positive, but China will end up telling the story. And at this point, I'm a little bit concerned about betting on that as we go through the next three or four months in particular. I think the, uh, I think they're going to want to, to slow down imports if they want to happen from an economic perspective, just to help that, that Chinese producer heal a little bit for some pretty challenging margins over the last year. Definitely. A uh, setback in the grains, it felt like a risk off day. Uh, was it a lot of technical selling pressure or was it just a lack of bullish news? Yeah, I think there's a, there's a reduced uh, uh, open interest activity. There's reduced uh, interest in, in speculation and really a lot of the commodity markets that, that, uh, that we care most about. So I think there's an overriding sort of issue there with, with you know, if you want to build a bull case, it's a, uh, it's a little bit hard to get people to jump on board just because of all the economic uncertainty and outside influence. But so, yeah, I think that's that's part of it. I think that's a part of the reason why we're not pushing this thing any harder. But there also are some other real issues, particularly as it relates to exports and strong dollar and and and, uh, and some logistics challenges. And so we'll see what happens. Pretty impressive this week. One hundred and six million bushel. Uh, uh, exports on soybeans rivals uh, any of the good weeks we've seen in the past. And so, you know, we keep hearing about uh, low water levels impacting movement, and it certainly is. We keep hearing about strong U.S. currency impacting our ability to trade, but we, we see as is, uh, is 100 million bushel uh, export week. So see how that plays out as we go forward here, but it's definitely a, an interesting story. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the soybeans are going PNW route, obviously, but you know, just the fact that we've held towards 14 and $7 on corn and soybeans has been pretty impressive with all those headwinds that you talk about. No doubt. No. And so I, uh, I mean, the, the base fundamentals uh, uh, provide for, for these type of price levels. So we've got uh, you know, extremely st tight stocks to use ratios on, on both corn and soybeans. And I think there's just enough question to Michelle about, uh, about uh, what's going to happen down in South America. I know they're poised to plant quite a few acres, but it's still quite dry in Argentina. Brazil seems to be off to a little bit better start, but I, I think you're, you're probably seeing some support in these markets just because of the fact that we've had a, a tough time growing above trendline crops in various growing regions across the world over the last couple of years. That is very true. Thanks so much for joining us. Pat Von Church with Professional Ag Marketing.